respected father principal tj jos vice principal mr kj devasya coordinator of academics mr ak das coordinator of activities mr shobha miranda our guest speaker advocate rahul dave teachers and students the present lockdown situation brings along both challenges and opportunities we in xaviers focused on the latter we took this time as an opportunity to introduce our students the realities of various jobs and professions students get to hear and interact with our xavierian family members who are successful in their respective field today we have advocate rahul dave to speak on the topic career in law and judiciary law has become an intricate part of our life right from cradle to grave there is no aspect of our life which is not under the law even today's virtual meeting as well as the scope of law is expanding so are the needs for young qualified advocates and lawyers advocate dave a senior advocate who has experience of nearly four decades is the best person we could ask for let me take few more seconds in reading out his profile advocate dave was from the 1976 batch was a science student with biology he graduated from st stephen's college and i believe he is wearing that uh, the tie and then after st stephen's to trinity college dublin ireland he did his llb from delhi university and at the same time he attended chamber of a barrister in delhi he started practicing since 1990 1985 i'm sorry and became an advocate on record of the supreme court in 1995 he is now an independent lawyer an arbitrator and a mediator thank you sir for accepting our invitation and taking time to enlighten these young zaverian minds over to you sir thank you mr george hello everyone i have no prepared speech so i'll just say good morning especially to the principal i thank him for attending and to all the other dignitaries on the days i especially welcome the students who have joined and i hope i can shed a bit of light on the topic at hand though i must say that mr george has stolen my introduction so i'll come straight to the topics i'm going to cover the main topic that i was going to start with is what is law we see law in movies dramatize we think that every advocate who's been practicing for 35 years is a senior advocate a senior at the bar but a senior advocate is someone who's designated as a senior advocate it's called taking silk so i've mainly been a law firm advocate i've been with jb dalal chenji i took over all dignum delhi from the calcutta branch i have to talk so we need to know what is law then we have to see what is what was old law and what is new law as mr george said law is spreading its tentacles wider and wider but at the same time there is a specialization that is required when i joined the profession we were all generalists uh i started life with the divorce case of a maharaja which the barrister was doing and since i was the junior most person i was given the what are called fish files to go through all the newspaper cuttings and everything and everything and prepare questions for his examination and cross examination so those were law we could do anything we could do divorce we could do rent control we could do uh, money recovery we could do anything we were champions inter intellectual property copyright the penguin case in 1985 but then 
it's become more and more specialization. So the third topic will be general practice to specialization. The fourth topic, and this I'm just drawing out, you know, I'm not going to stick to anything. Fourth topic is who does law? The fifth topic is what do you need for the legal profession? The sixth topic is how do you get into the legal profession? And then I'm much better at answering questions unless they are very, uh, you know, particular questions. Okay, can you tell me what is on page this thing of that case report or something? I can't answer those. But I can answer general questions. I've had loads and loads of interns. I was lastly with Dua Associates, which is one of India's largest law firms in the Delhi office as a senior litigating partner. And I had loads and loads of interns. And so I'm very familiar with undergraduates. I'm not so familiar with uh, uh, school leavers. Um, but I think coming from St. Xavier's, you all come with a significant advantage by the grace of God. And that is language. Right? And general knowledge. And a cross section of people to interact with who may not be of your own religion, who may not be of your own area, or your own state. So I would say the school leavers of St. Xavier's are already undergraduates or at that level. And you will find out yourself. The moment you go into any kind of undergraduate situation, you will find your comprehension is better. Your knowledge is wider. And you can easily deepen it. And your communication skills, which goes with language, are significantly better. <laughs> I say this with a sense of pride, but also a sense of reality because I have had interns who have done their schooling in St. Xavier's. So let's come to the first topic. What is law? Mr. George said almost all fields of human activity, endeavor, and existence are regulated by rules. The tentacles of law spread to each dimension of our life. So law simply educates you or doesn't, I don't like to use the word education because education, I think knowledge is something you absorb. No, law guides you to find what are the rules of the area you are interested in? If you're interested in the media, as opposed to print journalism, you will find there are media laws and you will know where to look for those laws. If somebody phones you up and says, I say, can you tell me this, this, this about the media, the law, what is this broadcasting, etc., etc., etc.? They don't expect you to say, I'll tell you right now, unless you are a super speciality in that field. But as a lawyer, as a person who has got his, LL, his or her LLB, You know where to go to find the answer. That's all. That is law. You know where to go to find the answer. Your dad asks you, how is this property tax calculated? Who calculates it? Can I challenge it? Where do I go and pay it? 
and you say, wait a minute, dad, give me 10 minutes. I'll give you a one pager with all the answers written out clearly. That is law. And it goes from there, it goes to space law. It goes to law of the oceans. It goes to all aspects of human endeavor. And that is the power that you get into your hands when you do law. You know what you can do. And that's a great part. You see it in super intelligent businessmen, in these new billionaires who are called unicorns. What do they do? They know what they can do. They find that area which nobody has looked at and they find out why is it prohibited? What are the regulations? How can I operate in that area? And some of them hit the jackpot. Others keep on trying. But every one of those has a lawyer whom they can ask, hey, is this allowed? Uh, can that guy do this? Why am I not allowed to do this? That is law. Now, law is changing. In the old days, there were the courts, there were the cases, there were the clients. We used to wear a black coat. Sometimes we wore a black tie, but then that dropped out of fashion. In fact, we all have those now clerical bands that come from the religious background of the church. But uh, for some reason in India, uh, all lawyers wear those white bands. I'd wear this white shirt and I'd wear those white bands with it. Put on a black coat. My black coat is hanging at the back. Wear appropriate trousers and go to the court. Prepare the case. Go and argue the case. Come back. Have a cup of tea in the court. Show off and come back home. And uh, bill, get your money. Most people took their money beforehand. And if somebody came to you and do you do marriage law? Yes. Do you do rent control? Yes. Will you do this bail petition? Yes. We will do everything. Why? Because we are lawyers. So that was the old law. And then there was this advice and opinion. So if somebody came to you and said, you know, somebody is saying that what I'm doing is wrong. Am, am I doing something wrong? And then you know, no. He said, can you give it to me in writing? Yes. What is that writing? That is my opinion as a lawyer that this is the law, this is what you are doing, and you are not doing anything wrong. That's my opinion. I may be right, I may be wrong, but I say it with full confidence. My opinion is my opinion. That was old law. Then it started changing. And it, I was uh, fortunate to be somewhere near there when it started changing. And it started changing in Delhi, at least, mainly because of one gentleman called J.B. Dharachanji, who was a very, very effective court lawyer for the 50s and 60s. If you open the Supreme Court reports, you'll find his name almost in every case. But then what happened? And I had the good fortune to work under him as almost as, as soon as I left the barrister that I was working with. I, actually, I joined him in 1983, so I was carrying his books for two years because I found uh, legal study very uh, uh, not satisfying at that time. Now it's, of course, changed very much. But anyway, Mr. J. Dalachanji saw that 
90% of the lawyers are chasing court cases and 10% are advising businessmen and who is the one who pays you fat fees that is the businessman the corporations the multinational corporation the incoming work the work income coming into india and he changed his practice around completely and he spawned a completely new practice that was almost unknown in delhi it was known in bombay it was known in calcutta probably also it was known in madras it was known in bangalore but he brought it to delhi he brought corporate law to delhi what we now generally call corporate law what is corporate law it started with let's draw up the contract let's draw up the joint venture contract between an american corporation and an indian business let's have a joint venture for the manufacture of tires pharmaceuticals etc he in the 50s was asked by the government of india to draw up the memorandum and articles of all these government companies and public sector undertakings that you see now it was a huge lucrative practice which was called completely unattended it was being handled by chartered accountants company secretaries and the american lawyers would come here with the suits and ties and big big uh, attorney bags we used to see them come into uh, jivan vihar offices of dada chanji and say why is the chartered accountant giving me tax advice i want tax advice from a lawyer so we lawyers had allowed we had ceded part of our territory to other professions we won it back and we won it back because people wanted the lawyers to sign off they didn't want a auditor or a chartered accountant or a company secretary very respected professions in their own right very useful professions but they wanted a lawyer to sign off so then the law firms came into being and the contract related work the company related work the mergers the acquisitions the specializations they all started and they started relatively late you know in the late 70s and 80s but they took off from there and that old general practice i'm on topic 3 now which was civil criminal court cases clients that went on because many people said okay i'm very happy i'm getting 50000 rupees a month doing just these rent control cases i work for 2 hours a day i go there at 10 o'clock in the morning i say my piece i come back by 11 if there is a trial i may stay till 2 o'clock i may not stay till 2 o'clock i go home i go for a swim i play cards with my friends then at in the evening i hold my evening sitting for an hour and then i go and do the same thing next morning and i am very happy i i don't want i don't want more than 50000 rupees today it would be about 2 lakh rupees i don't want more than that take 6 months to get there in the legal profession and so we are very happy we are just doing matrimonial law going property law doing then those tribunals came up you know the debt recovery tribunal the army tribunal armed forces tribunal the railway claims tribunal the administrative tribunal all these tribunals came up so they said bhai hum is gali ke keede hain hello hai hum is gali ke keede hain yahan ka sab kuch maloom hai जो जज ने ब्रेकफास्ट खाया वो भी मालूम है 
तो उसका मिजाज हमको मालूम है सो दे बिकेम एब्सोल्यूट स्पेशलाइज पीपल इन द ओल्ड फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ जनरल प्रैक्टिस बट स्पेशलाइज टू वन ट्राइब्यूनल वन कोर्ट वन फील्ड ऑफ प्रैक्टिस वी कॉल दम एरियाज ऑफ प्रैक्टिस बट देन इट स्टार्टेड becoming complicated property law for example just take property law property law suddenly you knew what property law do you do real estate or do you intellectual property and suddenly if you did intellectual property you were a totally different kind of animal so you would go and do your llm in uh, america and say i am an intellectual property lawyer why i know trade bar very very few would come forward with a science background and say i know patents i know chemistry i know the dif- difference between one molecule and another molecule and then today the cutting edge is biologicals if you start patenting those and they have heaven knows where you can go so it's a huge huge very very specialized field what we call a super speciality personal law also split up into various fields like guardianship so there are specific guardianship lawyers there are specific adoption lawyers there are specific matrimonial law so every simple field which we thought was simple split up suddenly all the banking cases were gone Where did they go? The debt recovery tribunal. So you, instead of running to Tisasari, you have to run to the debt recovery tribunal. So all these things started. But then, what happened at the same time was corporate law started becoming multi-faceted and multi-layered, and they became so. People started saying, you know, I'm. I call myself for Rahul Dave. What what would Rahul Dave say? He is. Rahul Dave would say he's a natural resources lawyer. Why? For the last twenty years, he's been doing mining law. So you don't say in corporate law or in litigation law that I'm a lawyer. You say what kind of a lawyer you are. You are intellectual property lawyer. Even in that, I'm a trademark lawyer. I only do patents. This is this is how it it came along, and in corporate law. it went into fields that were absolutely amazing and there were some people who took it forward from the 80s to the 90s 2000s and they brought it into a completely different arena uh whereas lawyers used to avoid tax and get a tax advisor into the picture where uh you know the client had to be given a package which included the tax advice they started making that package themselves taxation came into corporate law and corporate law split into many fields media most media advice is not in the tribunal it is mostly on paper it's mostly discussion when any transaction has to happen there are experts who are advisors on an efficient transaction structure so it became more and more complicated now we come to the question who does law in the old days there was a very straight answer two kinds of people lawyers children and people who were sitting the civil services exam lawyers children because law runs in the family it's easier everybody knows what the uh, options are right from the beginning what you can leverage who are the clients etc and the people who were sitting the civil service which unfortunately were quite a few of them in the law center when i came back from Dub- dublin and joined quite a few of them were hanging on to their hostel rooms in the university i'm talking about delhi university and uh, 
they were uh, just doing law just to keep the hostel low and the ones just because they were writing this civil service exam they were never going to practice law they never did practice law jubilee hall guaya hall all these places were full of law students but those law students weren't interested in law very few of them some were the persons who didn't get uh, as in aside i will tell you the persons who didn't get uh, formal residence from the jubilee hall illegal residents association jira so i had several friends with whom i used to play bridge and they were members of jira illegal residents association <laughs> they were also doing law <laughs> it was quite funny but then the people who were actually serious about the profession came into the picture and those were the career minded people people who saw law the study of law a degree in law not as a route to practice but as a route to a career and it is absolutely true that law as a route to a career a secure 9 to 5 solid job is very valuable sometimes you find an ias officer who is a, a doctor or from an iit and you say why did you become an ias officer virtually because the interview board at the upsc stood up and saluted when he came into the room but here the doctor who wants to become ias aaja bhai yahan baith ja law was like that in 1985 i also sat the ias exam because my dad dad wanted me to i took political science which i had done in dublin and law which i was just finished doing i had you learn nothing in law school so whatever i had learned was learned at the hands of the barrister i worked for but i found that political science and law for the ias the syllabus was 50% the same and surprisingly i surprised myself by getting a pretty high mark not enough to get an interview call but i missed the interview call by very little and i was got away with my life because that would have really changed my life if i had uh, mistakenly got in there because i never wanted to do that so there were another category of people who said we want to be lawyers and that category of people were independent people bindas we don't want anyone telling us now you get up in the morning and you do this we will do what we want to do and we'll do it because there's a fire burning inside us and you don't tell us what we have to do so if i want to do work with underprivileged migrants right affected i want to go around and do free bail petitions i will do that nobody is to tell me that so if i am working in an organization of course people will tell you what are you doing where is your time sheet give me your time what did you do for this half an hour on this day we don't we, we are not interested in that so we were we were independent people we wanted to be independent we never wanted to be uh under any that is the best kind of lawyer uh, for practice for practice because that lawyer does things he or she wants to do not because somebody says you do this so the other thing next question is what do you need for law i have already said you need an education like the one that they were gives you i say this with a sense of humility 
it is a privilege to have the language it just opens your eyes this kind of an education and that alertness that it brings you is something you need everywhere in life you must love to read in the legal profession you find several lawyers and that's why there's room at the top several lawyers don't read i find this a lot on the criminal side you have a tough case on the criminal side so who's who is the lawyer who can deliver you know a, a, a bail who will go through this with me who will read the law after this who will convince this judge that this petitioner needs bail and you go and sometimes you go to a lawyer and ka ka nahi batao you tell them the facts ah theek hai see you in the morning i said no but let's discuss the case he said kya case hai ek hi to section hai they won't read the more you read the more success you'll have in law the more passionately you read and you may read anything you may read john grisham you can read whatever you like you can read but you must read the newspapers and you must keep current with the law whatever law you are practicing so you must have that passion and if you have a pet subject for example if your pet subject is biology in law the avenue for biology is endless it is endless you want to go into academics and research it you will never come to the end of that road in chemistry it's endless you must have a passion for something so if you have a passion for sports sports law is endless look at the complications in the last 20 years we've seen in sports law doping scandal bribery scandal high profile scandal but underlying all of this is a huge foundation of sports law and there are very few experts so what since avias gives you is the ability with your passion to go for the top so there must be a jigyasa that's what i noted down here now having said this i must also say that every professional degree gives you a lot of flexibility so whether you are a chartered accountant you may not practice chartered accountancy you may become a tax advisor with ernst and young you may start practicing as an insurance advisor you can do that with law you can do that with medicine you can do that with any profession today now to come to the point uh how do you become a lawyer broadly there are two routes one is the five year route the combined ba llb that is a relatively new animal i've had lots of interns from ba llb and from the top law colleges bangalore hyderabad calcutta jodhpur and the other route is the normal route that uh, we used to follow still followed 3 years ba plus 3 years llb the national law schools and some of the others have a common law entrance test clat and some have individual entrance test especially for the plus 
Delhi University, MIT. CLAT, I suppose you all know, has basic subjects, English, general knowledge, elementary maths, legal awareness, logic. I would expect a student of Xavier to walk through the CLAT exam. What do I prefer? I prefer the three plus three. Because once you get into, say, let you get into National Law School, Bangalore, five years. Who's sitting next to you, a law student? When you go to the cafeteria, who's sitting next to you, a law student? For five years, you're surrounded by people who are saying law, 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 law. You don't get a perspective on life. You get into a college, any college. You you're sitting in the cafeteria. One's a science student, one's a engineering student, one's a medical student, or in the medical stream, and one is uh, you know heading for law. Someone's doing history. It gives you a great perspective. What does this education, in any case, mean? You don't carry it to your law firm or your career afterwards. It just tells you where to find things. You don't memorize anything. No rules and regulations that you memorize in your law school are ever used thereafter. They are just supposed to be seen for your exams and after that it's over. Then you are, it's up to you. And what is up to you? It's up to you to read passionately and practice. And what is practice? Practice is Riyaz. What is Riyaz? If you're a tennis player, you find a wall and you go and hit the ball against that wall for half an hour every morning. That is Riyaz. Practice is the same. If you are a trademark lawyer, you call it a trademark journal. You read that trademark journal and you make your notes. You see what's happening on the original side of the Delhi High Court, which reminds me as a <clears throat> Final thing I should say, tell you the court structure, though I'm sure all of you know, the apex court is the Supreme Court. Every state has a high court. These are the appellate court. Some of the appellate courts, like the High Court of Delhi, Madras, Calcutta, Bombay, these are the chartered high courts. So it's called a special charter during the British period. They have an original side. So you can actually go and file your suit in the Bombay High Court. And the original, the, the trial will be at the Bombay High Court. Other High Courts are not like that. You want a trial, you go to the district court. You go to the subordinate courts. You go to the civil judge. Depending upon the pecuniary, the, how much money is involved. The place you choose is where the offense or the cause of action arises. So you can't go and have a litigation that has something to do with a property in Jaipur and you file it in uh, Calcutta. Unless there are very good grounds to do so, you can't do that. So what happened then was apart from the uh, lo uh, the district court, the sessions court, where the criminal cases are tried, the magistrates, the civil judges, the tribunals mushroomed. So in the last 40 years, we've seen a lot of the jurisdictions of the courts go to tribunals, like the company law board. Now it's called the National Company Law Tribunal, NCL. And there are several benches of it around the country. And then there is an appellate bench, NCLAT, National Company Law Appellate Tribunal. And the appeal from that goes straight to the Supreme Court. So what happened there? The ordinary courts, including the High Court, got sidelined completely. So all company matters go to the Supreme Court in appeal from the appellate tribunal. 
telecom, securities, all these specialized agencies, the tax, ITAT goes to the, suddenly you go, but the Supreme Court judges, they come from the High Court Judiciary. And today, everybody says that, you know, this Supreme Court judge doesn't know tax. How would he know tax? You took the jurisdiction away and gave it to the, uh, the tribunals. So there has been a whittling away in one way. But for lawyers, it's very, it's a joyful event. Because the more tribunals they have, the more work there is. So if there's one very fancy lawyer who rules the high court, gets all the cases, he's cornering all the uh, cases in the high court. Suddenly, 10 tribunals are there. So he can't go to 10 tribunals, or she, she can't go to 10 tribunals. So maybe one visit to one tribunal a day is possible for a lawyer practicing in one of the higher courts. So there is this huge complex structure that has been formed of courts, tribunals, appellate tribunals, appellate courts. And then you have in every high court, you have two kinds of jurisdiction. One is the ordinary jurisdiction, which is under the ordinary law, which is you have and a case, a normal case between two people, it's resolved by way of a trial. Say they are fighting over a property. There is a case, there is a judgment. That judgment is appealed. And then you can, if you are lucky, you can go into a second appeal or even to the Supreme Court. But then there is a very important field which is becoming bigger and bigger is mushrooming in fact it's ousting most of the hearings of the ordinary cases and that is the extraordinary jurisdiction under the constitution what are called writ petitions so where you find that you can complain against the state doing something wrong you can invoke the extraordinary jurisdiction of the High Court by way of a writ petition. Public interest petitions, which I suppose all of you know what they are. They are all writ petitions. So if somebody wants to go to the Supreme Court directly under Article 32, of the constitution and petition the Supreme Court that the migrant labor is being ignored. You go and invoke the extraordinary jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, not the appellate, not the advisory. So every court has its own jurisdictions. One is the extraordinary jurisdiction, which is the writ jurisdiction. That's becoming more and more important in uh, India, it's called judicial review. Judicial review of what? Governmental, administrative action. So the judges, the court reviews what the, uh, the uh, government has done, what the state has done. This started in the 40s in England in a case called the High Trees. Well, not exactly, but judicial review in England is very, very small. The area is very small. But in India, it's become so huge. This writ jurisdiction has become an area of practice by itself. So I don't have uh, much more to say. I don't know how much time I've taken. I've taken too long. I would welcome any question. Uh, right, sir. Thank you, sir, for your uh, succinct and cogent introduction to law. You have guided us uh, on how the law has progressed over the years. And uh, you have even harped on to the fact which we teachers also 
emphasize upon that reading is a lifelong activity. I mean, you cannot survive without reading, be it be any profession. Now, uh, I'm still uh, waiting for a few questions, but I have received a few questions. Since uh, you have mentioned about barrister, do we still have barrister here in India now? No. Uh, okay. You can qualify as a barrister in England, Ireland, various other places, but not in India. And uh, it's an additional qualification. And many people, especially Calcutta lawyers, uh, do traditionally in families send their children after they do law here or after they do their LLB in England to do the bar. So they get admitted at the bar in those inns of court. You must have heard of Middle Temple, Inner Temple, uh, all those uh, Gray's Inns, Lincoln's Inn. So uh, these are basically eating houses where you sat with other uh, senior lawyers and discussed law over a glass of wine and uh, your dinner. Um, barrister today is a sort of a show off thing that, look, I'm a barrister. Or oh, it's the same thing with an LLM from Harvard, you know? So in your card, you'll write LLM from Harvard. Uh, is it required for practice in India? No. But if somebody who is coming from in, uh, America sees this lawyer's LLM from Harvard, they will certainly say, oh, uh, let's find out about this lawyer, you know? So that's all it is. I mean. Barrister, I said, because this gentleman was uh, trained in England and he had, uh, he was very English. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. So uh, what I get is that barrister is basically what is used in, in the British and the British former British colonies, yeah. while in, in America and all it is like LLM and it's, it's equal into something like LLM. So it's just a nomenclature thing. Yeah. America has attorneys. Uh, attorneys, all right. They okay. don't even have senior advocates. In India, we have advocates under the mm -hmm. 1961 Act. And after a few years, if you're very successful or the court in, wants you to become, uh, you apply to become a senior advocate, in which case you can only meet lawyers. You can meet clients through lawyers. You can't meet them directly. So I meet my clients directly, but now more and more I'm, I'm, I'm working uh, for lawyers. So. Uh, I don't know, maybe sooner or later. I left uh, Dua Associates in 2018. Okay. So I'm just, right. uh, I'm basically been a law firm lawyer. Law firm lawyers can't be senior advocates. At okay. least shouldn't be. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, as you mentioned, there are many students who are kind of uh, use it as a synonym, advocate and lawyers. I believe both are different. So can you just give, in, in, in very, uh, you know, easy terms, what is the difference between a lawyer and an advocate? Nothing. A Nothing. lawyer is a generic term. So a lawyer can be a lawyer from Australia. Lawyer can be a lawyer from uh, any other country. Uh, a judge who writes well says, you know, I'm a very good lawyer. So you may be a judge, but you may still refer to yourself as a very good lawyer. Why? because you are proficient in the legal profession. That's all it means. Advocate is something you achieve. You have to, after you've done your LLB, you have to enroll as an advocate under the 1961 Advocates Act. That gives you the right to practice. And that right to practice is all over India. So that's, advocate is a very specific thing. Senior advocate is a very specific thing. Is calling people lawyer and counsel and all these are all generic terms. Okay, right. So one is specialized and one is generalized. Uh, there's a great deal of interest in, among students about about being corporate lawyers in the, in the field mm. of being corporate lawyers and as well as lawyers who who are specialized in intellectual property uh, rights. So this particular student wants to get into the music industry, but as a intellectual property lawyer. So uh, oh, both these things as a corporate lawyer as well as in IPR. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So these are the two questions which I've been getting. So over to you. 
Uh, so intellectual property, uh, I would deal with first. Intellectual property is not something that is tangible. You know, it's not real property. It's not real estate. But it is certainly in your ownership. So if you write something, you are the owner of what you have written. Why? Because the Copyright Act says that that copy that you have created is your creation. You own it. You can license it. So the owning of it, the registration of it, the licensing of it, that is intellectual property law. So somebody comes along and says, you have written this beautiful book. I want to make a screenplay out of it. He's not allowed to make, she's not allowed to make a screenplay out of it until the author gives a written permission. That written permission is drawn up by a lawyer. Usually, some written permissions are contracts, you know, production contracts, directorship contracts, all these huge, huge contracts that have come. So that uh, intellectual property law flows in one direction into media law. But sticking to intellectual property law, copyright is not the be all and end all of it. Trademarks, Coca Cola. Kingfisher, how much is Kingfisher worth? The brand itself is worth thousands of crores. So every brand, every trademark has to be jealously guarded. So wherever there is somebody who says that I'm making Mercedes underwear, this, this came to the high court. Somebody was making Banyan and putting Mercedes on it. So Mercedes came and said, what is this nonsense? So they said, there is no question of deception here. I'm not deceiving anyone because Mercedes is a car. I am only putting it on a banyan. No fool is going to buy a banyan. The, they said, no, you are using something that has transnational recognition. It's not only recognized in uh, Germany, it's recognized in India, even though it's not made in India. Somebody looking at it may say uh, that it has some connection with Mercedes. Why can it not have? Will's uh, fashion garments. So they may say that, yeah, this Will's has uh, got something to do with that Will's. And it does. So this trademark law is a field by itself in intellectual property law. The third aspect, which is very, it's coming into its own now because of certain changes in the Patents Act in India is patent law. People run away from it. There are very few lawyers in India who can write a claim. A claim is something you give to the controller of patents who says to you, yes, you have made something new and useful. Very few lawyers in India who can write a claim. They rely upon scientists, they rely upon the inventor, they rely upon other people, but it's, it's a very tough field, but it's a fascinating field. And uh, patterns, then there are designs. You can have a design, you can have a design of this wonderful cup one of my juniors gave me. It says genius on it. You can actually, this design can be registered. No one else. But then you'll have to fight it. There'll be an opposition. How can you register this design? This is normal. So <laughs> it's intellectual property law is uh, not only a field by itself, it's several fields by itself. But then they interconnect, you know, they go forward. Like copyright law goes forward into media law. It goes forward into publishing. It goes, everything goes forward. So, uh, I mean, uh, when somebody comes to me and says intellectual property law, I say, wow, which one? Uh, so, Mr. George, what was the first question? The, the, yeah, you have right, uh, you answered the IPR one. The second yeah. one was about the corporate lawyers. Corporate, corporate one. lawyers. Less yes. said, the better. Mm -hmm. You see, what is being touted as corporate law in this country, I don't know. It's all company related. So that company related practice is put your shoes in a businessman or a top executive of a company. What does that person need? 
first of all he needs clarity on gst okay so and all other taxes so you need tax advice you need intellectual property law advice you need banking law advice you need advice on a hundred aspects of law that touch that business and that business might be telecom it might have its own laws that business might be something to do with explosives its chemicals it might have its own laws it so corporate law is actually a misnomer for advising companies but it's a useful catch all phrase and what happens is people today as soon as you get your llb there will be campus recruitments and all the top companies firms law firms uh kpmgs price waterhouses ernst and young they all come to the campus provided you are in one of the top campuses and they'll do campus recruitment and they'll take these freshers and they'll put them on a chair in front of mr ambani or mr you know uh, tata and say uh, now you advise them i'm i'm just exaggerating but why i say this is if you don't know what the judges can do to your contract how are you writing that contract so uh because of the technical issues there are a lot of problems here so uh, i think we have uh, we'll be concluding now uh, so i'll i'll invite uh, mrs supriya abraham uh, to give the word of thanks ma'am uh, you can unmute yourself yeah. yes you can yeah, you yes yes ma'am loud and clear all right that was wonderful um so uh, as we conclude our session i would like to take this opportunity to express our heartfelt gratitude to mr rahul dave uh, who has amply explained the nitty gritties and also the professional aspects of being a lawyer it becomes quite clear that despite having had taken science with biology in school he chose a very yeah. different career yeah. path in life yeah. sir you have definitely yeah. captured yeah. the students yeah. with yeah. expertise that is the legal profession i am sure they will be propelled to follow this career path you were both inspirational and motivating thank you sir for taking your precious time and to speak to our dear students and i would also like to take this opportunity to thank our father principal father jose tjsj for his constant encouragement and support in conducting such events and our vice principal mr kj devasya for organizing these sessions so that our students get clarity on the career options available to them my express my gratitude to sir ak das the coordinator of academics and also to our teachers who have helped with their technical expertise a word of appreciation goes out to all our students parents and teachers who attended this wonderful session thank you so much sir thank you all thank you father principal thank you very much thank you thank you sir hope to thank see you. you right thank yeah, you sure. thank you Thank you thank you Rahul sir thank you